welcome in the sweet name of Jesus on this course of Sunday morning. And we have ordered, we have a deal with our Lord. No rain this morning. No rain. Nice cool weather, not too much sunlight, so it should be perfect. And when I'm looking at you, you pretty much look perfect, every one of you. You look pretty, pretty nice. Very beautiful scene, by the way. Now this morning, the sanctuary ceiling is way high up. Can you see it? It's up there somewhere, but it's very high. So are the walls. They are wide out there. And then the main entrance, uh, it's, we keep it open all the time. What a place to worship in God's big sanctuary. And you are so welcome with us. If you are visiting with, the, with us this morning, first time, you are very specially welcomed. Also, Sunshine Friends family, our preschool, uh, kindergarten, children and families, you are very, very, very much welcome as well. This morning we worship and we, uh, our theme of this worship is fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit. So you are going to hear about it and we are going to preach about it and sing about it and pray about it and then what else is happening after this service, it is to be seen. More information coming right in the end of the service, what we do when we have done with the service. So we are welcome you to stay for the time of fellowship and eating and, and doing good things together. So, and then somewhere there is circulating, we are going to start our Wednesday night program before too long, so our sign-up seat is circulating somewhere there. Some of you already asked this morning, is going to come out, out there. It is there, so please sign up. If you are planning to attend our Wednesday night program, Wednesday night study, we need you to sign up so that we can order your book. We are going to start ordering books this coming week, so I want you all to sign up. We know how many tens of people will be attending. Wednesday night's program will start September, excuse me, September 13, which is not too far out. Let's pray together. Let's welcome the Lord to worship with us this morning. I think he was here before one of us came in. Let's surrender to him right in the beginning of this service and let's welcome the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, to inspire us on this gorgeous Sunday morning. Please join with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we have come together to worship in your sanctuary, in this beautiful, beautiful sanctuary, Lord, outdoors, between the parish hall and the sanctuary, Lord, we have decided to worship under the open sky to reach out for the many blessings and to be a great witness to each other about your love, mercy, and grace. That was new for everyone this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, come as we worship Jesus Christ. Inspire our hearts, give us passion, and help us to see you, and help us to see one another being built up in this wonderful grace of Jesus Christ. It is in your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Good morning. You will find uh, the song lyrics in, a, in your bulletins on a separate piece of paper. So if you want to find that um, sheet, that will help you as we are singing this morning. Now, I want to say two things before we start singing. One is that we have a, a friends and family kind of situation with us here in this uh, electric piano here. This was donated by Sue Johnson's estate. Her family donated that to our church, and it's a, today's its premiere uh, piece. So I just am very grateful for it, and thank you, Christy, for how you play it so beautifully. Our first song today is a brand new song for many of us, if not all of us. Um, and because we're in a new space, we thought we would do a new song. Now, it is fairly repetitive. So I hope that by the second time through, or maybe the third time, everybody will be singing, and then we have some good clapping that can go with it too. All right, it is called Every Praise. I invite you to please stand and sing together. Every praise is to our God.
a sign of Christ's peace with those who are near you. I guess I should have said that before I said you could be seated. Sorry, I was on vacation. This is getting rusty. Please greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. And those who are worshiping at home, we just thank you so much for joining us. And we extend the peace of Christ with you. Knowing that he is present with you there as he is present with us here. So we ask the special, for a special thing today. Children, we want you to come up and sit in these chairs that are up here for a children's time. And our Sunshine Friends director, Miss Chelsea, is going to be coming and doing the children's message. And I think Miss Courtney is going to be giving her a hand. So we invite all the children to come on up and get a chair. And if we run out of chairs, we'll, we'll help you out some other way. Please come on forward. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to them belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me. Children's Church in just a second, okay? So today we're going to talk a lot about the fruit of the Spirit, and sometimes that's hard for young little minds to kind of understand. My job today is to sort of open up that door and maybe sort of teach you some stuff about the fruit of the Spirit, and one of the ways I like to do that is by reading a book. 
So I'm going to read this book. Then I have some special friends who are going to help me after that, okay? Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe God is like that too. I live in the city where the sidewalks and subway cars and buildings and buses are packed with people. But I've never seen God before. Grandma, does God live in the city? I asked one morning at breakfast. Yes, God is here, she says. You just need to know where to look. Whenever you see love, joy, and peace, God is there, she says, stirring her tea. Wherever there's patience, kindness, and goodness, God is there too. When you see faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that's God's spirit at work. On the way to school, I'm on the lookout. I see a bus full of tourists and count 10 bright yellow taxis. I spy a man sweeping, sweeping a stoop, and Grandma and I laugh when we see a tiny dog wearing a fluffy purple sweater. You see the dog? At school, Grandma hands me my lunch and hugs me close before she says goodbye. That's what love looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. On the swings, I pump so hard, I see over the wall into the alley. My friends shout, higher, higher, as my feet fly way up in the sky. That's what joy looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Outside, car horns blast and sirens scream, but my classroom is quiet and calm. That's what peace looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. I try to tie my shoes, but the laces tangle around my fingers. My teacher sits down with me and shows me how to tie them. That's what patience looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. On the way home, I see a doorman wearing a red cape and a hat with a shiny brim. He's holding the door for a man using a wheelchair. The man moves very slowly, and the doorman chats with him and smiles. That's what kindness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. While I'm setting the table for dinner, there's a knock at the door. It's our neighbors from downstairs bringing us a loaf of bread. It's golden brown and warm and wrapped in a thin white towel. That's what goodness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. After dinner, I work on my homework while Grandma stands at the kitchen sink washing dishes and humming to herself just like she does every single night. That's what faithfulness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. At bedtime, Grandma sits at the edge of my bed singing a lullaby and stroking my head. She tucks my blanket up close around me. Maybe that's what gentleness looks like. Maybe God is like that too. I lie in bed watching the curtains flutter. I want to talk about that dog we saw today and how high I can swing. But Grandma says that once I'm tucked in, I have to stay in bed until morning. I close my eyes and try to fall asleep. That's what self-control looks like. Maybe God is like that too. I saw God over and over again today when I saw love, joy, and peace, and wherever there was patience, kindness, and goodness. When I saw faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, I saw God's Spirit at work. I don't see God the way I see my friends or the street lights or the river, but I see signs of God's Spirit all around me, right here in the city. I know what God is like. Maybe I can be like that too. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 23a. So sometimes it's hard to understand that, but that book does a really good job of telling you or showing you. So now I'm going to tell you what I think love looks like. I think love is putting others before yourself, like choosing to be the caboose instead of the line leader, because like Jesus, you put others before yourself. 
Maybe God is like that too. I told you I brought some friends with me today. Everybody say hi. So these people really care a lot about sunshine friends. And they're going to help tell you what the other fruits of the Spirit look like, okay? So Miss Lee Miller, if you'll raise your hand, she's going to tell you what joy looks like. To me, joy is overwhelming happiness. The heart is full. It's like you just opened your favorite gift on Christmas or you just want a soccer game. It makes you feel happy inside and nobody can take that away from you. It's kind of like Jesus' love. Miss Lindsay Garrison is going to tell you what peace looks like to her. To me, peace is when your heart feels quiet and still and you feel very relaxed. Kind of like if you've ever seen a deer walking and getting a drink of water out of a creek or eating in a field and everything's quiet around them. Miss Lee Schultz is going to tell you what patience looks like. Have you ever worked a puzzle and it's really hard and you start in the corners and you do the outside and then finally you finish the middle? That's a reward. That's what patience is for me. Miss Miranda Montgomery is going to tell you what kindness looks like. Kindness is when you have to share your favorite stuffed animal with your friend even though you might not want to do that. Miss Donna New is going to tell you what goodness looks like. Goodness are those times when you make a mistake or maybe you do something wrong, but you know that God loves you no matter what, and your family still loves you no matter what. That's what goodness means to me. Miss Courtney is going to tell you what faithfulness looks like. Faithfulness means keeping your promise or doing what you say you're going to do. So if you're at your friend's house playing, and you say you're going to help tidy up, even if it's a big mess, and even if you really don't want to, faithfulness means you do help your friend tidy up. Miss Connie is going to tell us what gentleness looks like. To me, gentleness is when you hear or see somebody saying something mean or doing something mean. You still show them kindness and gentleness and forgiveness instead of being mean back. It's like Jesus said, to love others like he loves us and to forgive others as he forgave us. To me, that's gentleness. And Miss Taylor is going to tell us what self-control looks like. To me, self-control looks like waiting in line for Kona Ice, even though I want to cut in front of the person in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one more thing left to show you. Whenever we put love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and self-control into our hearts, you need one more thing to make it bubble over. What do you think that is? Jesus. You need Jesus. And when you put Jesus in your heart, this is what should happen. <laughs> So we want our heart to bubble over with all those good things that my friends told you today so that we can be more like Jesus and love everyone. And now I have one more friend who's behind me, and he is going to come and say a prayer for all you special people. Jesse, I'm glad you are calling me your friend. <laughs> Let's pray for all the children since we are in the beginning of our school year. So we have, how many school kids we have here? Let, let, let me see your hand. Any age, if you are still attending school, college students included right there. Yeah. All right, we have many. I'm going to ask all your children, please, if you can stand. Can you stand? Okay, see how many they are. And students too, can you all the students stand? It don't matter how old you are. And then everyone, we have, wow, we have good representation from the college here this morning. And then everyone who is working for the school system in any capacity, how many of you are working, teacher or staff or doing something for the school? Yeah? 
I think you are still student, am I right? All right. And the rest of us, let's cross our fingers with children and we pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we are asking blessing upon all the children in this sanctuary this morning, upon their staff, teachers, and anybody who is working with students and children and of any age. Lord Jesus, we are asking your guidance and help and protection and, and wisdom for the coming year. Help us to have a great year at the church, at school, at university, anywhere where, we, where is the place of learning and sharing. And we ask your special blessing also for teachers and staff and all the people who are working for educational purposes. In the suite of Jesus, the name that is beyond and over any names we can understand, we pray and we thank. Thank you. Amen. We're going to sing, um, as they're leaving for children's church, we're going to sing together a song entitled, Lord, Be Glorified. And the verses we're going to sing today are, In my life, Lord, be glorified. In our schools, Lord, be glorified. And in your church. Let us sing. First scripture lesson is Psalm 124. If the Lord hadn't been for us, let Israel now repeat, if the Lord hadn't been for us when those people attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up whole with their rage burning against us. Then the waters would have drowned us. The torrent would have come over our necks. Then the raging waters would have come over our necks. Bless the Lord because he didn't hand us over like food for our enemy's teeth. We escaped like a bird from the hunter's trap. The trap was broken, so we escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The second scripture reading is Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, you who look for righteousness. 
you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry where, you're, where you were dug. <clears throat> Look to Abraham, your ancestor, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. They were all alone when I called them, but I blessed them and made them many. The Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her ruins. He will make her desert like Eden and her wilderness like the Lord's garden. Happiness and joy will be found in her. Thanks and the sound of singing. Pay attention to me, my people. Listen to me, my nation, for teaching will go out for me, my justice as a light to the nations. I will quickly bring my victory. My salvation is on its way, and my arm will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me. They wait for my judgment. Look up to the heavens and gaze at the earth beneath. The heavens will disappear like smoke. The earth will wear out like clothing, and its, and its inhabitants will die like gnats. But my salvation will endure forever, and my righteousness will be unbroken. The following reading comes from Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. Okay. Yes. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. There is no law against things like this. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, and you, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. and this is Marshall Isaacs. He was in Sunshine Friends last year. He wanted to join me. So hope you guys enjoy.
we can almost predict that Marcel will be a great guitar player before too long. Maybe he is already. Let's show our appreciation one more time. You guys did wonderful work. I learned to know Marshall pretty well as he was here with our Sunshine friends. And every time when I have time with, with students there, Marshall remember asking me that, Pastor Timo, did, did you bring any snacks for me? <laughs> I bet uh, a few years down the road, <clears throat> he will remember me by somebody who uh, did not bring snacks for me. <laughs> Since the circumstances are so comfortable, I decided to uh, preach one of my longest sermons this morning. It's probably an hour and 45 minutes or so, but we can eat in the middle of it and then come back and finish it up uh, sometimes this afternoon. But growing fruit and becoming like Jesus is a wonderful theme. This is how I titled my sermon, if you follow it, uh, the PowerPoints in your bulletin, you can kind of uh, do some, uh, write some notes down and, and, and follow it maybe as, as we move on with this message. But when we listen to our gospel reading this morning, according to John 15, we hear Jesus' word and it gives direction to us, what does it mean to be fruitful, to bear fruit? When Jesus says that he, he, he says that he's the wine and we are the branches, we, we get the point, am I right? And then he says that if you abide in me, if you stay in me, please notice, he didn't say if you stay with me. It is part of it, but he says that if you stay, if you abide in me, and I in you, then you bear, then you bear fruit, then you grow fruit, and your, and your fruit will last. So what is important for us to understand that we are, we've been called to, to abide in Jesus, to stay in Jesus. Not just to hang around with him, but to stay in him. And then the Apostle Paul, who I think grasps pretty well what Jesus taught, he teaches us what the fruit of the Spirit is. So what is the fruit of the Spirit? Let me ask you this morning. What exactly is the fruit of the Spirit? It is sometimes a little bit hazy for children who are learning to know about Bible, I believe it's still somewhat question to us what the fruit of the Spirit is. What is the fruit of the Spirit overall? The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is one. Okay, it's one fruit, not many. Notice that the Bible calls it the fruit of the Spirit, not fruits of the Spirit. One fruit, Galatians 5.22 says, the fruit of the Spirit is. It doesn't say the fruit of the Spirit are, but the fruit of the Spirit is. It is interesting, by the way, to notice when you are using different translations that there is a little different list of the fruit here. For example, the, the, the translation I'm using this morning, it is New Revised Standard Version. It is so-called Wesley Bible with lots of quotes uh, and references from Wesley. Here is how it says, what it says about fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, guidance, Generosity, please notice, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Generosity kind of replacing the goodness. Well, you can't be generous without being 
fifth person and vice versa. Not the fruits of the Spirit, but one fruit. In other words, there are not multiple fruits of the Spirit from which you pick and choose. But there is one fruit that flows from the Holy Spirit and that manifests itself in these various characteristics. So we shouldn't think of these various characteristics as different kinds of fruit, actually. Rather, they are one fruit like one apple cut into many sections or many pieces. Each one of these sections is part of the same apple. Each one of those sections is as delicious as any of these sections are. Therefore, we should consume the whole fruit to feel satisfied. Not just the one section, because it won't be enough. We need to consume the whole fruit to be satisfied spiritually. So the difference between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, there is a difference. Now the gifts of the Spirit that Apostle Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11, there are many gifts. But when we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit, there is only one fruit. There are many gifts of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is one. One fruit of the Spirit. Another difference is that God doesn't give you all, give you all the gifts. If I was to ask here this morning that how many of you believe you got all the gifts of the Spirit, I believe I don't see anybody's hands up. But he gives different gifts to each person, each believer, as he chooses. Why? That is for the Lord to build up his church through different spiritual gifts. Remember, many gifts, one fruit. But we all receive the one fruit of the Spirit. God doesn't want you to have all the gifts, but he does want you to have all the fruit all the fruit so it is one fruit of the spirit not many secondly god's holy spirit produces god's fruit it is god all alone we call it fruit of the spirit because god's spirit produces god's fruit you can't produce god's fruit in me and i cannot produce god's uh, fruit in you we see this in Galatians 5, 16 to 18. The verse is immediately preceding the description of the fruit. Here's what it says. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. Here Paul tells what he tells, the way I understand. He tells us to live by the Spirit and not to be led, and, and to be led by the Spirit. To live by the Spirit and to be led by the Spirit. When you live by God's Spirit, you allow the Spirit to lead your life. How many times we pray that? In the worship service and you pray at home? Holy Spirit, lead me now. I want to be led by you. What a great prayer it is. You cannot grow fruit of the Spirit on your own because we are all captive to our sinful nature apart from Christ. God's Spirit produces God's fruit. So you need to live by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit day by day, yielding to the Spirit by hour, and depending on the Holy Spirit moment by moment. And this is what the church prays. And this is what we pray when we have our personal devotionals. <clears throat> by the way, I don't know if I've heard the story 
about a young boy who used to escape from his second story bedroom window by gliding, climbing down on old fruit tree. I have done it myself. And I'm sure if, if you were a boy one time, you probably did it as well. When you grow up and you become teenage and your daddy asks you to stay in your room and do your homework, this is what it when it happened to me. I climbed down from our farmhouse. Uh, I don't know, was, there probably was a tree as well, but I, there was a ladder or something. I, I run out and joined with my friend and maybe we went out chasing for girls or what did we do? I don't remember anything. <laughs> I'm too old for that. Now, one day this boy heard his father saying and he was going to cut that old tree down because there's no fruit. I need to do it as soon as possible, he says. It hadn't borne any fruit for years. <clears throat> so the boy heard it and he decided to do something different. So he purchased a bustle of apples. The bustle is about 64 US pin, am I right? about 35 liter, European standard liter, so it was a loss of apples. And one night, he and his friends tied them to the princes, all these apples. The next morning, this father shouted to boy's mother, he said, Sherry, you don't believe this, because I'm having a hard time to believe it. The old tree of ours, who uh, that was barren for years, is covered with beautiful apples, all beautiful fruit. It is unbelievable, unbelievable miracle, he says, especially because this tree happened to be a pear tree. <laughs> that was a miracle, am I right? That was a miracle. Trying to grow the fruit of the Spirit in your life without the Holy Spirit is like trying to, apple, to grow apples to a pear tree. It won't work. The fruit of the Spirit is something God does rather than you do. We need Holy Spirit in our lives because we cannot produce fruit on our own. This is why the church pray, Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon everything we do. I want to be true, a true follower of your, of your spirit, and I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit produces fruit in me and in you. You can't do it on your own. This becomes even clearer when you contrast the fruit of the Spirit with the acts of the sinful nature. We read in Galatians 5:19. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. I'm sure they are. Why do we call them the acts of the sinful nature? Because they are actions. They are acts of the sinful nature and they are very close to you and to me. This is what you do and this is what people do. They are acting upon their sinful nature. They are your works, your actions. But the fruit of the fruit of the Spirit is something God does. God doesn't act upon fruit of the Spirit, but it is something that God does in your life. He develops His fruit in you through the Holy Spirit. This is why the church pray, send your Holy Spirit, or you pray privately, Lord, I want to be filled by the Holy Spirit. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Notice also that the acts of the sinful nature are many. They are listed in the plural as opposed to the fruit of the Spirit, which is one. Only one Spirit, only one fruit. We do not acts of the sinful na nature. We do the acts of the sinful nature. But the fruit of the Spirit is something God does. Something God does. God's Spirit produces God's fruit. God develops His fruit in you through the Holy Spirit. 
Now we come to the closing and you, you want to pay attention on this. It is the character of Jesus Christ that God grows in you. Jesus says, abide in me as I am abiding in you. And this is how you bear fruit. And there's no other way. You say, Lord, come and polish these my good characteristics. I have quite a few of those. So that somebody can call me a good Christian. Now, <clears throat> that may be something that Christians strive, but it, it is not the right way to do it. It is the character of Jesus Christ that God grows in you by growing the fruit of the Spirit. So what exactly is the fruit of the Holy Spirit then? It is the character of Jesus Christ that God grows in you. Wonderful thing. Wonderful, graceful thing of God. Notice that the fruit of the Spirit is not so much a list of things to do, but rather character traits that God wants to develop in you. But they are not just any character traits. Character traits. They are the character traits of Jesus Christ. That is a big difference. This is why the church pray. Lord, make me like you. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus Christ, my Savior. That is the only why I call this my message this morning. Grow in fruit and becoming more like Jesus. Because if you never figure it out why I need to grow fruit, this is the reason for you to become more like Jesus. We are missing people like Jesus, am I right? We are missing them in the church. We are missing them in the community. We are missing them at schools. We are missing them at the higher leadership of this nation and anywhere. We are missing people who are like Jesus. That is also why we call them, call it one fruit, because together these character traits form the one character of Jesus Christ. This is why we who are many will become one, like Jesus, as God grows his fruit in us. The Bible describes the whole process of growing as a Christian, as growing to be more like Jesus. For example, we read in the 2 Corinthians 3.18 that we are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sometimes called the Spirit of God and sometimes the Spirit of Christ. The Christian life is life of transformation where you grow to be more and more like Jesus through the Lord, who is the Spirit. Something to take home. So some of you may ask, what is then my responsibility in the process of transformation, in the process of changing? Or like in the Methodist tradition, we say in the process of sanctification, which means that we are growing more and more to become like Jesus. First, we need, we need to weed out our garden. We need to weed our garden. We need to cut the weeds. We need to be killing the sin in our life by repentance and confession. Apostle Paul says in Colossians 3, 5 to 6, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of this, the rod of God is coming. The old saying goes, and you have heard it, be killing sin or it will be killing you. And how true this old saying is. And secondly, along with weeding, cutting the weeds, is water your garden. By saying God, and I'm referring to a spiritual life. You can pull out every single weed, but if you don't water your garden, it will still doesn't grow. We water our spiritual garden 
That is our life by reading God's word, by reading the Bible, by reading God's word daily, as soon as we can, as often as we can. The songwriter says about Christian character, about Christian person, about Christian man and woman and Christian sister. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Whatever he does prospers. Come back to what Jesus says. I have invited you to stay in me abide in me and I am in you and this is the way to bear fruit and you, your fruit will last in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If the others please can come forward at this time we, we are taking time for the ministry of giving. this morning and also be ministers of heaven to empower and to meet all the needs of your kingdom and of Christ in Christ's name. Amen. beautiful, beautiful church one and folks who are worshiping at home. We've been united to Christ and we've been united by his love and mercy. And we've been united by his presence, constant presence. And how many of you have a prayer concern this morning before we leave this place of worship? We have, let me see your hand. How many of you have prayer concerns? We, we just about everyone. And if you uh, please can turn back to your bulletins. 
at the back of your bulletin there's a prayer chain list a long list of uh, people friends church family members maybe some uh, family member of yours who are on our prayer list at this time we we want to pray because we believe in God who hear our prayers let's go to the Lord with these people who have asked us to pray for them for asking our prayers for them dear Lord Jesus hear our prayers for Preston hear our prayers for Scott dear heavenly Father, in Christ's name, we pray for Cheryl and Mike and Elizabeth, newborn in ICU. We pray for mine and Susan, another Susan and Donald. Lord Jesus, these are not just names but they are friends and family members. These are people who are so dearly beloved by you, Lord. We are so thankful that, that we have you. We have you to lean, to, to lean on, to pray, to, to trust these friends under your grace and mercy and healing presence in Jesus' name. We continually pray for Margaret and Shari and Dave, Edna and Jack and Becky. We continue praying for Don and Jackie and Wes and Evelyn and Patty. And Lord, we pray for that war in the middle of Europe in Ukraine, Ukrainians trying to defend their independence and to become free nation among other free nations. Lord, we ask your strength for them as we pray for everyone whose name on this ongoing prayer list. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus. Hear our prayers. Keep your Holy Spirit so that we can grow fruit. Help us, Lord, to abide in you as you abide in us for us to grow, to grow fruit that we must. help us to be more like you help us to be your true follower lord oh god our dear heavenly father who caused the minds of the faithful to, to unite in a single purpose which is love grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise that amid the all uncertainties of this life our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Stephanie, are you here for a little announcement? Okay, come on in. I think many of you do not know me, so let me start with an introduction. My name is Stephanie. I am the co-chair of the Evangelism Committee here at Bree United Methodist, and we would like to extend to you today a very warm welcome, and we thank you so much for being here. Today is our second Friends and Family Day, so we hope that many of you were invited here by a close friend or family member, and we want to make sure that everyone that is here for the first time receives a welcome packet. So if you have not already received one of these today, please see me. I'm really, really easy to find because I'm wearing a lemon apron. So 
Just find the lady with the lemon apron if you haven't received your welcome packet. My friend Leanne's in one too, but she'll make sure you get a welcome packet as well. So if you don't have one, please, please find me so that we can get that to you because we want to welcome you and let you know that we would love to follow up with you and pray for you and just love you in any way that we can here at our church. So inside this packet, you'll find a welcome card. If you would please fill that out and just leave it with me or leave it with Mary or Pastor Timo, just someone, just so that we know you were a guest here today and that we can follow up with you if you would like. Second thing I want you to know is that we are celebrating friends and family today with a free lunch. So if you would please stay after the service, then we will have lunch out here in the lawn. Give us like five minutes and it'll be ready. That smell you smell is the guy's grilling. So it's gonna be done any minute but we've got to carry drinks from inside and things to go along with the hot dogs. So give us just a few minutes to do that. And then you can sit outside if you would like, or we have seating for about 30 people inside. So if you'd rather sit inside, we do have some tables where you could sit, but if you would stay out here first until the food's all out there, that would be great. Please do stay and join us for that. After that though, as soon as we are done eating, we are celebrating the fruits of the spirit today. So we have what I'm referring to as our fruit market inside the parish house, which is this building right behind me. Please, please come. So all of my volunteers who are in charge of for Fruit of the Spirit, if you would come into the parish house as soon as the service is over, we wanna be at our tables. For those of you who cannot stay with us for lunch, we would really appreciate it if you would just come on in and visit our fruit stands. Inside the bulletins, you should have received a card so that card represents each of the fruit of the spirit and we would love if you would come and just check out the tables you'll receive different gifts at the tables there's a dessert made from every fruit assigned to the fruit of the spirit at the tables so that means there's at least nine different desserts for you to choose from so we'd really really enjoy getting to meet you getting to know you and just sharing with you what we've learned about the fruit of the spirit that we've been assigned so please do join us for that making sure i haven't forgotten anything Oh, at the very end, please bring your card to me, which you will see me beside the lemon table. And we're going to put your name in the drawing. I wish I brought it out. We have a beautiful fruit basket that we put together with different fruits that we're talking about today. And at the end, we'll just have a drawing and someone will get to take that fruit basket home with them. And even if you leave before that, if you'll just write your name and phone number on the back of the card, then I'll make sure to reach out to you and I'll get the fruit basket to you. But for everyone here today, we have a nice welcome gift. So if you'll come by the fruit market and check us out, we'll give you a gift on your way out. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for joining us and welcome to our church. I'd like to invite you to stand and we're gonna sing, I've got peace like a river, love like an ocean, and joy like a fountain. Please stand. I'm getting hungry after smelling this this uh, wonderful a uh, uh, grilling order coming from from the guys there and please stay with us before we leave this place of worship and we continue our time by fellowshipping please let us open our hearts for the blessing and benediction 
My dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.